Good afternoon. My name is Tim Emily. I look after research, innovation, emerging technology across the Costain Group. And it's a fantastic job because I get to engage young people across the UK, everywhere from Edinburgh, where we're taking undergraduates, investing heavily in automation and robotics, to Cardiff, where we're investing in advanced materials, looking at extending asset life, to the great work that's going on at Cambridge, where we're actually looking at intelligent infrastructure. And a lot of these things are very important to us as a business and also to the future of our industry. I'm looking at skills and innovation today. and An important part of skills and innovation are people. We need skilled people that can innovate. Are we making the most of the people that we've got to address skill shortages? Are we making most of those people, whilst they're working for us, looking at new ways of delivering things? So as a business, we've been asking ourselves those questions in collaboration with our supply chain and our customers. And it's those people that have delivered some fantastic projects in the past. But just as we've heard today, we've got some massive challenges ahead of us. As an industry, we're seeing low in terms of our productivity. We're seeing that we don't invest in innovation, not in the true sense like manufacturing. But when you go out into our projects, you see some fantastic innovation going on. And you've heard Chris from uh, Crossrail talk about some of the great work that Crossrail are doing alongside other customers, not just in the rail sector, but right the way across the industry. Thames Tideway have said, I like the model that Crossrail have created around innovation, and we want a carbon copy of that for that mega project. But the demand for skills is going to keep on increasing, and we must look at increasing the attractiveness of our industry, dipping into that pool of talent from other industries to address some of these major skills challenges that we've got with High Speed 2, Crossrail 2. But we also have some competition from other industries. But I like to, not to call it competition, I like to call it collaboration. So as a business that works across many different industries, I like to see our customers collaborating to make sure that we've got the right skills in the right place at the right time. So what do the rail customers expect? We've heard today that they want lower cost but greater value across the asset life. They want things delivered faster. They want low emissions. So everything that we design in that front-end engineering, look at different ways of doing it to actually reduce the embedded carbon. So it takes different ways of actually thinking about how we're actually going to deliver our infrastructure in the future. And we must increase the competitiveness in our industry, making sure that we've got the right environment, supporting those small organisations to come through with some great innovation. I can see in the audience today some small organisations that have actually innovated and brought new things to our industry. But why do we need to do this? We've got some major national challenges around infrastructure within rail, within power and within water. But our customers are expecting that excellent experience, no matter what industry that you're in. They want the industry to leave a legacy. So it is about delivery today, but it's making sure that we've got an industry that is world-class tomorrow. So it's very important that we're making use of our current talent, but making sure we've got that talent coming through. And it's making sure that we've always got that A-team. So as a business, we feel passionately about making sure that our customers get that excellent team every time. So the change the industry will need to think about is this business model. How do we actually go to work in a different way? How do we ask those questions to get better performance out of our supply chain? Procurement is a key, and Costain's got quite a large research program going on in looking at procurement and commercial mechanisms to make sure the supply chain is in a healthy position, aligned to our customers' expectations. Making more of what we've got 
There are smarter ways of doing things, using technology to actually enable the workforce so you can actually get more done for less. And also attracting people into the industry. I think this industry is hugely exciting. And when you take school children around your projects, they say, I didn't realize that. So it's important as an industry, we open up our doors and educate people what a great industry we have. What I'd like to do is just bring Lydia to the stage because she is one example in our business of someone that's come through the cost system of actually investing in undergraduates, spending her career, early part of her career, learning about other industries and now working in the rail industry to actually deliver one of Europe's major programmes. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Tim. Um, just some of the things that are kind of recently won. So we're talking about women in engineering um, and the diversity. I recently won the award for the best young woman in construction in Europe and uh, just last month became chartered as well. Um, so I'm here today to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm here today to talk to you on an operational level about some of Costain's projects, uh, three case studies, and how we are working with our customers in order to enhance the skills and, as Tim said, drive innovation. At Costain, we have the capability and the agility to work on the whole project lifecycle on all areas of the railway. We have talented uh, delivery teams who are supported by specialists from within our business and this enables us to deliver the whole project life cycle. So from concept, design, construction, operation and maintenance. And this is one of the reasons we've been so successful in the rail industry. So first I'll talk to you about Crossrail. Um, there's some of the things that uh, kind of echo Chris's comments from earlier. Um, the apprenticeship scheme, Crossrail has really been driving forward and has been quite instrumental in bringing this back into the construction industry. Um, the apprenticeship scheme offers another alternative route into the construction industry. So I came through the traditional graduate route, but my younger brother, who's also a civil engineer, came through the apprenticeship route and is excelling in his career as well. So it is really important that we have these apprentices, um, but not just for white-collar positions, for blue-collar positions and um, giving them the skills to work in our core trades. Um, I believe that this is important. Um, Chris said again that quality uh, leads to safety as well. We need to make sure that we've got a good quality product, people are taking pride in their work and with the good workmanship skills. Although I do believe that we still need to support apprentices once they finish their two, three year program. That's something we still need to work on. In a similar theme, the Prince's Trust. So Costain um, has been working with Crossrail and the Prince's Trust in order to give uh, job opportunities to people in the local community who are out of work for whatever reason. At uh, Paddington New Yard, which is uh, where I'm senior engineer at the moment, we've been very successful in placing a number of people from our local community in Paddington onto the project, and we've now offered them some uh, permanent positions with us. Two of our um, project directors, Claire Carf uh, at Bond Street and Isabel Coman at Paddington New Yard, um, they are our very talented project directors. Um, Crossrail is demanding a world-class railway and we need world-class delivery teams in order to deliver that. And I think the fact that they are women as well also just shows that they are leaders on iconic projects and is changing the face of the industry. Innovate 18 is also something that Crossrail has been um, pursuing um, and at Costain it's benefited us and across the whole Crossrail program. So Innovate 18 is a platform where you can share innovations um, across the whole of Crossrail. Um, it enables us to pinch with pride from other projects. So that's driving efficiency um, and making the whole program uh, safer, um, more efficient, more reliable. So Innovate 18 has really um, benefited us. The next project uh, is one of uh, a newer offering from Costain, is the ability to electrify railways. 
Um, so this uh, project behind me, we're electrifying 2,000 miles of um, railway. Now, we normally our traditional skills are in civil engineering, and when I first started five years, when we were recruiting, it was generally civil engineers, um, a handful of mechanical, health and safety and quantity surveyors. But we are now uh, recruiting um, undergraduates within 16 disciplines. So again, I think that's showing how the industry is changing. It's not just um, small projects where it's um, just solely engineers. We need um, a number of different industries, really, and sectors in order to deliver these mega projects. On this project as well, we need people with um, really good program management skills. And we're using other sectors, so for example, the power sector, uh, to bring in knowledge um, into this project. And I think that's really important as we move into other mega projects, such as uh, Thames Tideway, um, to make sure we're sharing knowledge between like Crossrail and High Speed 2. All these, the three titles I've got here, basically show that we need a project lifecycle capability in the rail sector. Um, and then again, we're using our apprentices, uh, graduates, and our leadership team to um, deliver these. Um, three projects here behind me. So Reading Station um, redevelopment. This was quite a high-profile project and was opened uh, late last year by the Queen. So at Reading Station, um, we were redeveloping the station, um, including the construction of five new platforms, all whilst keeping the station operational. And it was one of our first projects where we had an integrated team between the client and the uh, joint venture partner. And at Farringdon, which was mentioned earlier again today, um, this was a project where we first started to use factory thinking and off-site manufacture. So we um, pr manufactured the roof cassettes uh, off-site with the M&E and fit-out already installed in them. And this dramatically reduced the program when we came to installing them on-site. So with those two uh, key ideas, uh, it's one of the reasons we were awarded uh, London Bridge. Um, so we've taken those and we're now on all of our projects using that off-site factory thinking and integrated teams as we go forward. Now, London Bridge is the fourth busiest station in London and on completion um, we would have increased the capacity of that station by 40%, which is quite a significant um, increase. Uh, so I've mentioned the younger generation with apprentices, graduates, um, but something we're doing differently here as well is the fact that we now have five PhD students working at London Bridge. Um, we're working in conjunction with Cambridge University. Uh, they are uh, looking at the data using London Bridge as a transport hub. They're monitoring and analysing data to look at the Smart Cities um, guide. Uh, so in the future, we'll be able to see how we can uh, live, uh, reside, work and play um, with this digital railway um, and in our, in our infrastructure system. So I think these three case studies um, have shown the amount of skills that we're going to need in the future. We already need them now, but it's just going to increase um, as we go further. Um, so I think just to sum up, I think the apprenticeship programme is incredibly important. We need to keep supporting them, though, um, as we do with our graduate programmes. And we need to think about the specialist skills, so our PhD students, and making sure that we use cross-sector knowledge um, in order to support our booming rail sector. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So I just have a couple of slides just to finish off on. Uh, but in terms of reinforcing what Lydia said, research and innovation is hugely important to new business models allowing us to engage with other businesses to solve our customers' problems. Why do we want to do that? It's because we want to optimise the resources that we've got. We want to get better uh, use out of the systems that we have. We want to deliver the digital railway today, so it's important that we invest and actually understand those particular problems and our role to play. And just like research and the importance of research is that you can experiment with very clever people to actually understand how all this is going to work in the future. We need to enhance our skills, so skills is very important, either collectively as businesses, or what we've done in Cost A is invested heavily internally, developing skills, allowing people to transfer between sectors. And we all need, also need creative solutions, making sure those solutions are actually coming from the supply chain as well. So this is a note to industry. 
We need to create an environment that encourages innovation, innovative solutions, and uses skills to increase the performance of our customers' business. That is why we go to work, that is why we invest in innovation, and that is why we have a skilled team. The future of our industry is in our hands. Be proud of the people and be proud of the innovation that they bring to solve some of the national challenges that we have. Thank you very much.